Lovers, this is Abby again. Um, so as some of you know, I've been making masks for my family, uh, but uh, I was about to make one for my grandpa who uh, is on oxygen, like he has the tubes that go in his nose and around his, the back of his ears. But the masks that I've been making have elastic that goes around your ears and that can be really irritating, no pun intended. Um, and so I wanted to, to look at a, a different design and try it out and see if, you know, something that didn't have those straps would be easier for my grandpa. Now, another popular option is having ties that tie around the back of your head, um, but that might be a little bit difficult. Um, he can sometimes have difficulty uh, with his fingers. So uh, I found a pattern that involves using Velcro, like a Velcro strap around the back of the head. Um, and I started sewing it and, you know, just using some scrap material, you know, the stuff had some stains on it, so I didn't feel bad using it for a, um, prototype. But, clearly I have a lot to learn about sewing because my pin's supposed to look like this. What did I do? So here is my prototype with my very beak-like uh, nose part. That's interesting. All right, so I'm finding that the chin is still a little large, though I have a very small face, so that might be a personal issue. Um, also, it is going right on up into my eyeballs. So I'm gonna redesign, see what I can do to fix some of these, uh, some design flaws, but that's why we make a prototype. Um, as far as how it attaches, that might be an issue as far as it goes over the ears and the only thing that's keeping it up oh, my good old ponytail so it might be a matter of adding two straps that go to the back of the head and instead of tying velcro or some other solution that i haven't thought of yet so i'll come back to you when i figured it out all right later hey okay so first design improvement uh, as you can see, it is no longer going into my eyeballs. That is because I started looking at... I'm going to take this off. I started looking at uh, the my first um, mask uh, uh, pattern I was using, and it has something... Let me see if I can show you here on the ironing board. This, like, swoop here that this pattern that I've been using for the for the Velcro one really didn't have quite the same dramatic swoop. So I cut that, I literally traced, you know, the swoop from this onto my prototype here, and that made it so I could see again. So design improvement number one. Innovation time. You may be wondering why I have a wire now on my face. Um, well, my brilliant future mother-in-law just came in and asked, you know, about my project and we started talking. I told her, you know, my grandpa wears this oxygen uh, thing. That's what this is simulating. She told me one, that's called a cannula. So vocab, woohoo. Uh, and two, she said, what if it, since the cannula kind of comes from the nose around the ears and down, you already have the ear loop, so you don't need to do a Velcro around the back of the head. You just need the mask to attach to the cannula. So what we're looking at doing is taking the mask uh, pattern that I had to begin with, which is actually fairly comfortable, and adding snaps to the ends. So where it would attach here, where it would usually be um, elastic, We'll have a piece of fabric that comes over and little snaps. So all you have to do is fold over, snap, fold over, snap. And the oxygen itself holds the mask on. We're gonna try this out. Okay, so we have a prototype here. I have the, the lining and the nose wire in. And we tried the a quick prototype just using some tape and some flaps to add the snaps here, but the problem we're facing is that it doesn't stay on without the tension around your ears. So 
our next attempt is going to be instead of having just a flap here on the corner having one that kind of comes all the way down to where the nose wire ends i'm trying that on each side and see if that keeps the mask up a little bit better we've gotten a little further with this here's uh, more of my prototype so what we have uh, what we've decided to do is the uh, the single snap at the corner that I had originally planned uh, did not hold the mask up well. The nose kept falling down. So we instead created this fold here, which creates a channel for the, uh, the oxygen to go through. I'll show you in a minute what it looks like on, but these snaps come up and down and the wire goes through here and behind the mask into the, the wearer's nose and down this way. And then the back has these uh, ribbons where we're gonna attach Velcro to the back. So it'll attach behind the neck and then here where it loops onto uh, the oxygen. Now I'm wearing my prototype. Uh, as you can see, I'm still wearing the um, our little simulated uh, uh, oxygen tubes. Um, Sorry, I got a string on me. Hmm. Oh my goodness, lots of string. Anyways, um, so here we have, if I pull this down, you can see this is where the uh, it would connect to the nose and go under. And then because this uh, bridge of the nose has a wire in it, it's fairly tight. And the mask folds over the uh the tubes that would go around the ears and snaps into place and then at the back of the head right now i have it tied i hope i'm showing you the right angle yep i have it tied back here we'll probably change that to velcro so it's a little bit uh, more accessible but that's the prototype so far it's still a little bit loose around the nose it's still coming down a little bit um i'm trying to figure out more ways to add tension here to pull the top taut, but so far it's coming along nice. Oops, well, sewed it wrong. Inside out. Gonna have to seam rip all of this and all of that and do it again. Great. Uh, so here it is, here's the final product. Uh, as you can see, uh, well, one comment that I found absolutely delightful is that it looks a little bit like overalls for your face. Um, and now I am never going to make this uh, anything but blue with white stitching because that's adorable. Um, the safest mask is the one you wear. Remember that. Uh, so we have our final design. All right. We have our two layers of cotton. We have our snaps and flaps it's gonna be hard to do one-handed sorry as you can see there's the pips here that come up you can feed the cannula through here uh, it then goes behind the nose wire so it goes from here under this channel behind the nose wire uh, here into your nose out the other side and under this flap too. Sorry. Using one hand to hold my phone to record this and one hand to do this. There we go. In our next iteration of this, uh, somebody, one of my uh, fellow makers at Hive suggested using Velcro. I think that'd be a good idea. But since I wanted to get this out to my, to my grandpa now, um, this will be the first one I send to him. Maybe the next one I send will have Velcro there. Uh, it has uh, two darts here under the chin to create kind of more of a contoured shape so it it hugs his face a little bit better. And then as you see on the side here, I have these little ribbons with some Velcro on them so that it can attach behind his neck and create some light tension nothing that's gonna feel like it's choking you not just you know just enough to hold the mask in place 
uh, against your face. And because I used kind of a wide strip of Velcro, it's adjustable. So if it's getting a little bit too tight, you can loosen it. If it's not tight enough, you can tighten it a little bit. Um, I also uh, included, I made sure that uh, these channels on the side, that these ha uh, seams on the side are channels so that if, for whatever reason, he doesn't want to use the cannula uh, snaps, you can feed some elastic through here and make it go around your nose. Um, I also left the, the gap between the lining fabric and the outer fabric open in case he wanted to put uh, some extra filter right there. And so that's it. That's my mask. I'm putting it in the mail today and we'll be all done. Thank you all for joining me on this, this uh, maker adventure. And I can't wait to see what masks you create. All right. Have fun out there, guys. Go make stuff.